Hey guys, it's Landon Blake with Redefine Horizons, and I'm getting ready to record our June 6th, be the week of June 6th, our June 6th CAD meeting. And so the first thing we're going to uh, cover in this CAD meeting is I'm going to teach you guys how to define a block, simple block, and then we're going to look at the difference between the, the burst command and the explode command so you understand that. So I've just got an example block here uh, that uh, would go, for example, at a section corner. And uh, what we want to do is we want to add some some text here for the section numbers, uh, but we want that to actually be defined as an attribute, which I'll explain here in a minute. Um, so I've got the, the four lines representing the section, and uh, we're going to add the, the attribute text, and then I'll show you we're going to scale this and move it so that it that it inserts properly as a block at scale okay all right so let's go ahead and actually uh, i'm in bricscad version 2022 let's go ahead and uh, define our attributes so we're going to uh, run the command at def att def define attribute okay and uh, we got to give this um, a tag a prompt and a default value okay so we're going to call this um, we're going to call it Northwest uh, Section, and the prompt will be Northwest Section. Okay, and the default value is going to be uh, just zero zero. Just put zero for now. Okay, and the text style, <clears throat> we're going to leave a standard here. We'll fix that in a minute, and uh, we're going to make this. Uh, I'm going to want it middle center justified. Okay, and I, I'm going to go ahead and leave the height at two tenths. Normally I do that at tenths, but I'm going to go ahead and do it two tenths. And so uh, we're going to go ahead and say, um, let's just pick a coordinate right here. And we'll say, okay, oh, the tag name may not contain spaces. So let's do this. Northwest section. Okay, and I'm actually, uh, I think I'm going to draw this, hmm. I'm gonna make this one unit high. Let's see how this works. Okay, so I've got this attribute now, and uh, this text is way too small in relation to what I drew here. So I'm gonna go ahead and scale this down. Okay, so this looks a little more like it. <clears throat> okay, and uh, this is gonna look a little weird because the attribute is gonna be bigger than the actual text value would be, but that's okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna offset this one unit and we're gonna center this text here on the midpoint like that. Okay, and then I'm just gonna copy this down. Okay, now this looks like a text attribute, but it's actually not. I mean, a, a text entity, but it's actually not. It's actually an attribute definition. So now we can just double click on this and, and uh, and edit it. So this will be the southeast. And I'm going to say southeast section number. Whoop. Okay. And then uh, I realize that I, I have this wrong because I'm dyslexic. This is the northeast. So it's kind of like text. You can uh, you can copy it. Okay, so let's do that other uh, do the offsets on the other side here. Okay, so we're almost done. We need four of these though, and then we'll edit these. So we're going to make this one the northwest. And we'll make this one the southwest. All right, then we can delete those offset lines that we made. We don't need those. All right, now, I want to set up my text style. So I'm going to go ahead and go into my text styles. And uh, I'm going to make a new text style. And I'm going to call it um, section. You know what? <clears throat> I think we've been using low, uh, what is it, low Lindra outline. 
try to name my textile the same name as the font. That's just kind of the standard we follow here. And we like to use this uh, Lodrina outline as kind of our outline font here at RH. So I'm going to go ahead and make these attributes that textile. Okay, now, <clears throat> the last thing we want to do before we actually define our, our block, so we just went ahead and defined the four attributes. Okay, an attribute is just a text value that goes with a block. Okay, so now we want to go ahead and make sure that we have everything on the right layer so that if somebody explodes our block, um, that, that stuff comes out on the right layer. Okay, so I'm going to make a new layer, um, and at my shop, this would just be on the survey boundary text layer. Okay, and then that's the text, and then we'll make a, another layer, and this is going to be survey boundary symbol section corner. Okay, and then uh, we'll go ahead and set these. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure what colors are going to work best yet. Uh, this is usually 57. Okay, so I got the two layers I need. So I'll put the attributes on the text layer. And we're going to test this out in a minute, see if it works. And we'll put this on the symbol layer. Okay, so we, we've got everything set up, our attribute definitions, and we've got our layers correct. So now we're ready to define our block. So we're going to run the block command. Okay, and we want to give our block a name. So we're going to call it section corner labels. Okay, and um, we're going to pick the base point, and we're going to select the entities. Okay, we're going to allow it to be exploded. We don't want it to be annotative. I usually do my block units as uh, unitless. Does it give us that option? I don't see an option here for unitless. So if I got a pick, I'm going to go with U.S. Survey feet. Okay, and uh, it says pick the insertion point for the new block. We want that to be right there. Okay, so now that these entities are still loose in the drawing, but now we have a block to find. So if we run the insert command, we could select that block, pick a place to drop it. Okay, and it's going to prompt us for each of the uh, each of the um, section numbers. So we could say we're at section one there. Okay, southeast will be, um, i got to do the math, 12. Okay, the southwest will be 11, and the northwest will be section 2. So now you can see it's added our section numbers, right? And uh, that's exactly what we wanted it to do, okay? Now, I did notice one thing I didn't like. So let's see if we can purge that block. Okay, and uh, I noticed I had double colons on my attribute defs, so I'm going to get rid of this because it, it already puts a colon in there for me. So on the prompt, I'm just going to get rid of that. Okay, and we'll define this again with the block command. Okay. Pick the insertion point. Okay, so let's test that again with the insert command. I'm going to drop it here. We got section 1, section 12, section 11, section 2 comes in right now. We want to test this. If we explode this, we want to make sure stuff goes to the right layer, and it does. Okay, now, <clears throat> now that we have that block defined, let me show you the difference between uh, the, the uh, explode command and the burst command. Okay. So if you run the explode command and select a block, it's going to take your text values and turn them back into attribute definitions. Okay, now unless you're modifying a block, that's probably not what you want. <laughs> okay, so most of the time when you explode a block like that, you want to keep 
you want the attributes to turn into text values with the value that was set for the attribute. Okay, so what you can do instead of using the explode command is you can use the burst command. Oh, and burst might not work because I have I don't have Express Tools installed because this is a new version of BrixCAD. So let me do that real quick. All right, sorry about that, guys. This is a new install of BrixCAD, so I didn't have Express Tools yet. So you can get to this command under Blocks, Explode Attributes to Text, okay? Or if you're like me and you're old school, you can run Burst on the command line. Now you pick your block, and the Burst command keeps your attribute values as text, right? Super handy. That's usually what you want to do when you're exploding a block. Okay, so now you know the difference between Explode and Burst. Okay, but let's show you how to properly define this block now. So there's a couple more things we want to do. One thing we want to do is uh, we want to move our block to 0, 0, our entities that make up our block. So I'm going to take this right here, center, and I want it at 0, 0. Okay, now it's at 0, 0. So you always want the insert point of your block almost always to be at 0, 0. Okay, the other thing we want to do is we want to scale this so that when we insert it into a drawing, we multiply it by the scale of the drawing, the horizontal scale of the drawing, and get it to be the proper size. So, for example, if I'm in a 50 scale drawing, I want to insert the block times 50 and have the text be 5 units tall, right? So, what that means is um, I need this text right here. Actually, actually because this is uh, times 2, I want this to be um, I want this to be 10 units tall in a 50 scale drawing. Okay, so in order to get that to work, this needs to be, instead of 0.1, it needs to be 0.2. So basically, I got to scale this down by 0.2. Okay, now, now I save it. It's at 0, 0, and it's set up at the right scale so that when I insert this block to a new drawing, I just multiply it by the horizontal scale of the drawing, and it'll be the right size. This text will be um, two times... Um, Instead of being a tenth in paper space, it'll be two tenths in paper space, which is what we want. Okay, so now, here's what you don't want to do since this drawing is being set up as a block. What you don't want to do is then make this a block inside the drawing. You don't want to do that. You want the entities to be loose in the drawing. Otherwise, you get a double nested block, right, when you insert, which is no bueno. Okay, because then your attribute it won't prompt you for your attributes. Okay, so we'll save this, and we'll say PLSS sec corner labels okay so now we've got a block ready to drop in okay so now you guys know how to uh, add define attributes in a block create a block get the insert point to zero zero scale it properly you know the difference between explode and burst so um, that's super cool you guys are going to be uh, block masters now all right so let's uh, pause this video I'm going to open Carlson survey and then we'll get to the next part of our CAD meeting all right, guys, I've got Carlson Survey open. Uh, we're going to try and do some more uh, Carlson Survey training videos um, as for our team here. I do a lot of BricsCAD videos, but I need to do some Carlson Survey videos. So what I'm going to show you in uh, this next part of the CAD meeting is how you can use the um, survey polyline tools to uh, generate closures. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how, how to properly do that. So in this example, uh, we're meandering around, uh, down a, uh, let's just call this the, uh, the edge of water of a river till we hit a, a sectional line. Then we come down the sectional line here to a section corner. And then uh, we come across the section line and then we run around this aliquot parcel here. And so uh, if we were preparing a land description for this or um, uh, this was on a on a survey map. We would need to do um, a closure report. Okay, and what we're what we'll do? What we would do? We need a closure report for the commencement courses and typically, and a closure report for the actual parcel. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to get stuff on the right layer. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up a couple layers. Okay, so we've got this layer for our subject parcel, but uh, we want to go ahead and add a layer. Okay, and we're going to put uh, our commencement calls on our ties layer. Okay, and I know I'm not picking the right colors, so don't get mad at me for that. Uh, this is just a quick example, so we're going to get this on the right layer here. 
Okay, so if this was a um, if this was a, let's say a record of survey and not a, a brand new plat and legal, then uh, these would be this would be our layers. Um, now, if we were let me flatten these real quick. Uh, if we were doing a brand new uh, parcel, like a lease parcel or an easement parcel, uh, then these layers might be different. They might be um, they might be uh, our boundary design layers, but we're going to pretend that they're existing. And I don't know why this line type is looking really funky. Um, so, but I'm not going to worry about it for now. Okay, so uh, we've got stuff on the right layer, okay, but we've got individual line segments, and that isn't going to work for what we want to do. So what we want to do is we want to create polylines. Now, you don't want to dork up our uh, line work drawing to do this. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to create a new drawing. And at my shop, we call this drawing closures. Okay, and it's going to go in the mapping folder for whatever work product you're working on in my shop. Okay, so... Um, I didn't name that right, sorry. Uh, we're going to call it closures. Okay. And then uh, let, me set, let me set this up properly. So what you really want to do is in your closures drawing, you want to insert your boundary line work drawing. Okay. Because we don't want to change the line entities in our boundary line work drawing into uh, polylines to do this. So let's just do this, pretend like we're doing this the right way. So I'm going to run my xref command, and we're going to go ahead and attach that. Okay, so we're going to attach our boundary line work drawing. Okay, so it's in here now. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to create polylines that we can use to run our closures. Okay. And so I'm going to go ahead in the closures drawing, we're going to make a couple new layers. Okay, so we're going to make a layer. We're going to call this survey boundary closure. I'm sorry, lines closure. And then I'm going to call this commencement. Commence. Okay, and we're going to make one more layer. And we're going to call it survey boundary lines closure. Um, subject parcel. <clears throat> okay, and I'm just going to set these to some colors that I know will show up good in the, in the video. Okay, and then uh, I'm going to go ahead and make my commencement dashed. Alright, so what we want to do now is we're going to draw two separate polylines. We're going to do one for our commencement courses. Okay, now here's a trick. We don't want to end it here, even though that's what our commence, where our commencement ends, because we always want to try and get a closed parcel on our commencement. So we're going to go back to our point of, from our POB, which would be here, back to our point of commencement. Okay, so now we can have a closed figure for our commencement courses, and I'm going to go ahead and put that on the right layer. Okay, and then uh, let me try my line type scale here. All right, that's getting a little better. Okay. All right, now we want to do the same thing. So I'm just drawing a polyline. We're going to do the same thing now for our subject parcel. Okay, and we're going to put that on the right layer as well. Okay, so now what we have now is we have two polylines, both closed. Right, one for the commencement courses, one for the subject parcel that are drawn on top of the boundary line we're drawing. And just to make life easy, I'm going to go ahead and detach that boundary line we're drawing for now. Okay, and what we can do now is we can use the tools in Carlson to run our two, uh, run our two closures. Okay, so we're going to go to uh, the survey menu in Carlson polyline tools, and right here we're going to run what's called a polyline report. Okay, so it's asked me to pick the polyline, and then it gives us this report here. Okay, and what I'm going to do for now is I'm just going to come over and paste this in Notepad. Okay, but I'm just going to make a note for myself that this is the commencement courses. Okay, 
and then down here I'm going to have I'll call this the subject parcel courses and then I'm going to show you how you can turn this into a closure report okay so we're going to run that same command again on the subject parcel get our polyline report right which we're going to turn into a closure report paste this in here okay so I'm just going to leave this up now what we want to do at my shop after that is we want to format our closure report because we like to do pretty closure reports. So I'm going to go into RH templates, RH boundary, and get this closure report here. And we're going to copy that. And we're going to go back to our training folder here. Okay, and we're going to paste this in. Now, typically, we want to name the closure report Word document, whatever the name of the parcel is. Okay, and we always do CR first for closure report. So I'm going to say closure report. Um, I'm just going to call this parcel 01. Okay, we usually do at least one leading zero. Okay, and uh, we'll open that up and take a look at it. Now, we're going to take the information that was in the notepad and we're going to paste it in here to our Word doc. All right, so we obviously have a couple problems here. Uh, first of all, this is not the right logo, so let's go ahead and change that. That should have been fixed in the template, so I got to remember to go fix that. Okay, so we'll drop our drop the proper logo in here. Okay, I'm gonna just uh, give this a new job number, so I'm gonna say it's 100.999. Okay, and we're gonna call it. Uh, Blake subdivision phase four and we'll put today to date in there June okay so you want to make sure when you do your closure report that information in the header is correct okay and then um, what we put here is we put closure report this is for uh, parcel one Okay, and then down here, this heading, we've got two headings we're going to use. We're going to make one, we're going to call commencement. Okay, and then um, we'll do another one for body. Okay, so I'm going to just delete these for now. Okay, we don't have any curves. But you can see there's a curve in the template. Okay, and then I'm going to take this and we're just going to copy it down. And we're going to call this uh, subject parcel courses. Because okay, you got to remember, if you're the city surveyor, county surveyor, or principal that's doing the peer review here, you want this to be somewhat logical, right? So what this tells you here is that you got the northing and the easting and then the bearing and the distance, and we want that to line up. Okay, and we've got our courses in bold. So let's go over to Notepad, and we're just going to copy this information from our commencement courses, and I only need this part here. I don't need this stuff on the top. So I'm gonna copy that in. Okay, and we're gonna unbold it. Okay, now we gotta do a little bit of cleanup here, so we gotta tab those. Okay, so we're gonna get everything tabbed over. Okay, and then once we got everything tabbed properly, we're going to go in and add our course labels. Okay, so uh, to do that, we're going to go course one, and we're just going to make that bold. Okay, then we'll do a, another line break, course two. Make that bold. Okay, and so we'll just add these. Okay, so let me pause the video and I'll get that done. Okay, so I added those. We got a label for each course. Okay, this goes in the order that we drew the polyline. Okay, now what this is telling you is that course one starts at this northing and easting and then goes this bearing and distance and then ends at the next northing and easting for course two. Okay, so right here at the end of course six, I wanna let the person reading the closure report know this is my point of, be point of beginning coordinate. And then what I like to do up at the top is just copy this, 
coordinate here and come over here and do a label for the point of commencement. And it just makes it really easy for whoever's reading the closure report. Okay. And then, um, oh, you know what? That's actually not right because well, this is an extra course, right? So what happens, I forgot we closed this out. So what we need to do here is we're gonna let the, uh, we're gonna let the uh, map checker know that we are at the point of beginning here. Okay, so I'm gonna copy, this is actually our point of beginning coordinate. Okay, and then we go course six to close out. Okay, so now we're coming back to the point of commencement. So we're just going to label that because course six is our closing course. If you look at that in the drawing, this is the extra course, course six, that we added to close out. Okay, so we're just going to label that all. It makes it really easy for the map checker. It makes it even better if you spell commencement right. Okay, and then what this tells you is we have no closure error, right? The total distance run by our polyline and the area of the polyline. Now, for the for the Commencement, I don't really care about the area, so I'm going to delete that, and I'm going to add a little foot tick on the end of these. Okay, and I also don't need to show this to, like, the hundred thousandth. Okay, so I'll just show it to the nearest hundredth. Okay, now we want to do something similar with the courses in the subject parcel, which there's only four. So we'll come back in here. And uh, we're going to copy out what we need, just this part right here, just the bottom portion. Okay, and we're going to paste this in. Okay, and then we'll unbold everything. We don't need it to be bold. Okay, and then we'll uh, fix our tab problems here. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and add our, oops, add our labels so this is uh, back at the point of beginning okay and I'm actually going to copy this coordinate up so this is our point of beginning coordinate okay and then we have course one the first course of the subject parcel okay and then we come around we have course two of the subject parcel course three Okay, course four. Okay, and then uh, we're going to close this out now. So right here, we're actually coming back to the point of beginning. Okay, and so you can tell these two coordinates should be close to the same, and they are. They're close. They're close. So we have uh, no closure error based on our uh, polyline. Okay, and this time we're going to leave the area. I'm going to tab that over, okay, and I'm just going to get rid of where it says polyline, okay, and we're going to show the area here. I like to add some commas, okay, and I don't like the way it does that, so I'm going to actually spell that out, square feet, okay, and then I just like to show acres to the nearest tenth of an acre usually, okay, and instead of the comma, I like to do a dash. Okay, and then we can bring all this to the left margin. Okay, so now uh, we have a super good looking uh, closure report. We'll bold this text, put a little line break in here, bold this text. Okay, we've got a closure report that covers the commencement courses and the body courses or the subject parcel courses. Okay, now one last thing I would do is I would just go in and add my foot tick to all the distances just because I'm anal retentive. I'm an anal retentive surveyor. Okay, and technically you could do that to the coordinate values too. Okay, but for sure I want it on my distances. So now we can save this. We've got a closure report. So now you know how to set up a closure report using the uh, tool in Carlson under survey polyline tools polyline report. You can see how to format that in Word. And uh, that's a decent CAD meeting, right? So just to review, we covered how to define a block, define attributes with the at def command. We showed you how to properly scale a block and move it to zero, zero, so it inserts at the right scale in a drawing. 
and we also showed you the difference between the explode command and the burst command in Express Tools. And then we showed you how to use the Survey Polyline Tools Polyline Report in Carlson Survey to generate a polyline report and then take the data in that polyline report and create a nice looking closure report in Microsoft Word. So appreciate you guys watching our CAD video for this week. I'm going to try and do better about recording these CAD meetings that my team can watch uh, whenever they want. We'll try and do them weekly. And I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks.